Hi there, in this mission control how-to video, we're gonna take a, a deep dive look into the Gantt chart and all of the features it has. So a uh, number of uh, features uh, that we'll be covering off with the Gantt chart. So obviously the Gantt chart visualizes the project timeline. It gives you full insight into uh, you know, when, when everything is expected to be delivered. And um, it's, all, it's, it's fully interactive. So you're able to hear drag and drop to reschedule, create dependencies, view your critical path, compare baselines to actual dates, as, as well as building out new records as well. So what we're going to do is uh, just jump in and, uh, and take a look. So there's a couple of places that you can actually access the Gantt chart, and we're going to take a look at both of those uh, in this session. Um, the, the the main way is on the on the project overview. Uh, if you have access to the Gantt chart tab, you can you can look at the pro uh, the Gantt chart filtered to this one particular. Uh, project. Uh, you can also look at it as a standalone page, which we'll, we'll take a look at shortly. So what we're looking at here uh, is, is the structure of the project. So I can see my, my project, I can see my action, uh, my milestones, and then I can see my, my actions as well. Now we do have that fourth layer uh, sitting under the actions called the checklist items. So if you do have checklists and you want to see them uh, visualized on the, on the Gantt chart, you can just click this button here that will uh, allow you to toggle those uh, checklists on. So if I turn that on, you'll see I've, I've now got visibility of those checklists and uh, that they're, they're available over here as well. So I can turn those on and off as required. So what I'm able to do is actually, um, so I can actually extend these columns as well if I if I want to adjust them to see, uh, to ha have a, a wider view of particular fields. Um, everything's interactive over here as well. So I'm able to drag and drop to, uh, to reschedule individual actions. I could pick up an entire milestone and drag and drop that as well. If I need to adjust the deadline, I can just drag that backwards or forwards as, uh, as, as to where I need that as well. The, um, one of the other things you can do is, um, is actually create dependencies uh, on your Gantt chart. So th those predecessors, so there's a couple of ways you can do that. And uh, we'll cover them both off now. So what you're able to do is actually just drag and drop um, from, from one action to another to create that relationship. So you'll see it creates uh, a finish to start dependency and it will automatically snap the uh, snap the, uh, uh, the predecessor, sorry, the successor uh, in, uh, to, to fall in line to follow immediately after the, uh, after the parent. So that, that auto rescheduling, that, that snapping of that action will only happen if you have this, uh, th this lightning bolt turned on. So this is, this, this is a feature that allows you to toggle on or off uh, the auto scheduling. So ultimately, if, that, if that's turned off, it will be red. Uh, and that means if I was to schedule a parent, the child would not move. Uh, but because I've got that green, uh, if I reschedule the parent now, you'll see that the child automatically moves by the same period of time as well. So the other way of creating dependencies is within this predecessors column. Um, if you if you don't have that predecessors column visible, uh, you just need to click into the settings tab and uh, and, ch and choose to um, and make sure that that w uh, the work breakdown structure and predecessors columns are visible. Okay, so uh, what I can uh, so instead of actually dragging and dropping to create that dependency, I can also do it from this predecessors column here. So if I want to make build page content uh, dependent on design UI, what I can do is actually just reference uh, this this work breakdown structure code uh, in here. So I'm just going to say this is dependent on um, 1.1.2. So as I hit enter, the relationship is created. So you can see that the dependency has been created. And again, the, the action has automatically snapped into place to happen immediately after that. If I do want to um, create lag or lead, I, I can actually do that as well just by putting in a, a plus one. So for example, uh, just added in one day, um, one day of lag there. So that's obviously pushed that out to where it starts. Uh, it's it's going to start on the Monday. So the dependencies uh, that you can create in Mission Control, so you're, you can see here we're, we're creating a finish to start, and that's between two different actions. Um, so you, you can also create a start to start. So for example, if I create a start to start, so instead of dragging from uh, the right hand side of the parent, I'm going to drag from the left hand side. And that will, uh, that if I drag to the start of the child, that will create a start to start. So um, again, then if I, if I reschedule that that would be that would move to start at the same period of time 
And you'll see the difference there is uh, it, it's just got the code SS um, added to it in, to, to indicate start to start. So there's really four types of uh, dependencies. There's uh, so it, there's finish to start and start to start. And the, so the child will all, always be in action, but the parent can either be a, an action or it can be a, um, a milestone. So, for example, let's say um, I want prepare training to happen after all of this is done. Now, it doesn't matter what order these get done. Uh, so really what I want to do is say as soon as everything within this milestone is finished, I want to start this action. So instead of creating the dependence for, uh, dependency from an individual action, I'm going to drag it from the milestone instead. So again, it's just a, a finish to start milestone, but it's dependent on the overall milestone being completed rather than the, uh, rather than the individual actions. So now that I've got those dependencies in place, um, I can, um, if, if I, for example, reschedule this and say, okay, well, I thought that was going to take me one day, I, I, I know it's now going to take me two, everything will automatically uh, reschedule uh, by the same period of time. Now, because that uh, is dependent on the overall milestone and we haven't gone past the deadline, that, that's why that didn't move out there. OK, so a few other things that we can do here. Um, I can double click into uh, into this record to add in more information. So if I if I double click in, uh, you'll see I've got some different tabs here. So I, uh, the action tab really just gives me some, some key fields relating to the record. So I can reassign the owner. I can go jump into the resource assignment wizard and, and um, pull in additional resources. I can change the, the hours scheduled, the status, and so on. If I want to be able to log time uh, relating to this action, I can do that just by clicking on the log time tab. Uh, or if I want to get through to the overall uh, record, so for example, let's say I want to get access to some custom fields that I've added to my action record, I can click onto the record detail, and that will give me access to the full action page layout there. Now I've got the same ability at all levels, so I can get through to the project, I can get through to the milestone or the checklists if I'm displaying those as well. Okay, so I'm just going to save this for a moment. So a um, few other things that we can do. So what we're looking at here are the actual dates that we're working to. Um, now I've made a few changes to this. So what, what, what do I do if I want to compare, how, how did we think this was going to go versus how it went? So what we can do here is, uh, is turn on our baseline. So if I just toggle on this button, it's going to give me my initial baseline view. So you can see here, when I, when I first scheduled this project, I thought the action, this action would take three days. It looks like it has. Whereas this, I thought I was going to get it done on Friday. We managed to start it one day earlier, but it actually took two days versus the one. So obviously as a result of that and based on those dependencies we've created I can see how things have moved throughout the project so using that as a bit of a lessons learned process I can take those learnings into into future projects again just to turn those uh, baselines off I just toggle that button back um, I can also edit the records by by clicking on uh, uh, the pencil icon rather than double clicking into that uh, into that now, if I need to schedule something outside of the existing timeline that I'm looking at, what I can do is just click on the, the buttons to either add, add week to start or add week to end. So if I click on that button there, you'll see I just get an extra week added to the end of the Gantt chart. And, uh, and then that would allow me to, um, to actually start rescheduling things in, into the future. Uh, again, if I needed to take that deadline as well, I could, uh, I could push that out. OK, so we've also got the ability to add new records as well. So we can add new records by clicking on the on the plus sign here. So I can jump in and say, OK, well, as part of this uh, design process, I need to get client approval. So I expect that to take two hours. I'm going to get that done um, myself and uh, click on save there. So I can I can then drop that in uh, wherever I think that needs to go. And once I'm happy with that, click on save. Now, what I can also do rather than adding 
uh, adding records one at a time like that. Um, you've also got the ability to um, create multiple records uh, in one go. And uh, I, turn, I, I turn that feature on by clicking this pencil icon. So this, this will add a placeholder down the bottom here. So if I, if I tick this, um, you'll see that it just adds in a placeholder. So what I can do is, uh, is create a new record. So by default, it's going to create a new milestone. So let's say um, we're going to um, we, we, we're going to be um, launching launching the website. So hit hit enter. That creates a milestone for me. Um, now what I can do is can continue creating new records. So I'm going to say um, go live. So I'm going to launch the website. So hit enter again. Now that creates another milestone. But what I can do is actually just drag that and just reparent it. And if I uh, if I have it sitting on, sitting under the um, if I have it sitting under the um, the milestone that I want to reparent it to, you'll see it just indents. So if I let it go at that point, it's now made that into an action. Now just one point to note: I can only change the type of record before I save it. So I can I can drag it, I, I can you know, change it from a, a milestone to an action or to a checklist, providing I haven't saved it yet. So now that I've changed that to an action, if I create another record, it's going to create that as an action as well. So ultimately, it adds the new records at the same uh, at the same layer that you've you've been doing it. Um, so if I if I save those now, now what that will allow me to do is 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 you know I could double click in there, assign resources, but then I could also start scheduling this workout. So I'm going to say right, well, go live day is here, and then we're going to be providing support for the for the following week. So if I just add uh, another week to the end there and just drag that out to the end. What you can also do, so obviously the um, the order has all been uh, the the order of the uh, records is all driven by the the dates on the timeline. Okay, so you'll notice a couple of these actions are uh, red and amber rather than green. Uh, so that's because I've indicated that this action uh, has a high priority, and that's why it's flagged up as red. Uh, this one has a high pro uh, a priority of medium, which is why it's flagged up as amber. So if I come down and say, okay, well, go live day is going to be pretty important, so uh, I, I want to make that a high priority. So I'll just change that to high. Confirm that. You'll see that that changes to red, and then I can make that change by saving that. Okay, so a few other things that you can do here. So you can click on this button um, to collapse, uh, collapse or show the, the 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 grid. So if I if I click on that, you'll see I've lost the table component. If I click on it again, it comes back. Uh, it, likewise, if I click this button, it's going to remove the Gantt chart, and I'm only looking at the table. Uh, or otherwise, click it, and it comes back. I can also adjust the the scale. So obviously this is a fairly short project, um, but I can I can adjust the scale just by zooming out. So you'll notice that if I if I click that once, I've lost the I've lost the individual days, and now I'm just looking at weeks. If I click it again, it would go out to um, months, and then right out to individual years. So you can obviously for larger projects, you might want to actually zoom out. Um, but the recommendation is if you if you do need to reschedule any actions by dragging and dropping, the recommendation is you're doing that that at the, at the day level. So obviously you can see now I'm back at day so I could I could reschedule things as, as required. Okay, uh, a few other things you've got the ability to um, export to an XML file that you could then import to MS Project. You can also export it as a PDF. So let's say you're wanting to share this timeline view with your with your customer, you could export it as a PDF or you could export it as a CSV uh, as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just jump over and take a quick look at the standalone Gantt chart, which is accessible via via the uh, the menu here. You can also get to it from the uh, Mission Control Console. And the the benefit of this page really is um, it shows you multiple projects. Now everything we've just taken a look at, that drag and drop, creating dependencies, all of that good stuff, is all possible here as well. The benefit being you're doing it in context of other work that you've got. So. If I scroll down, I've got multiple different projects in view. I can see where they're all where where they're all scheduled. And obviously, there's a lot of information here. So if I if I want to take a higher level look, I can just click on the this um this button here, and that's actually going to um sorry this button here, uh, I, and that will collapse my um 
that, that will collapse my, my actions from view. So I'm now just looking at projects and milestones. If I click it again, it's going to remove the it's going to it's going to remove the, um, the the milestones. So I'm able to take a really high level look at just the projects, or I can drill into the milestones, drill into the actions, and then toggle those checklists on as well. Thanks for taking the time to watch this how-to on the Gantt chart. Hope you found it useful. Um, just a quick, uh, quick slide to fi uh, finish. Um, if you do have any questions, obviously we'd love you to get in touch. You can do that um, uh, via our support desk, which you can reach e either via the the email there or or via the website. A few additional resources you might find helpful. Uh, we have a, a detailed user guide available on the website. We also have a range of training videos similar to this one covering all the different features of the product, as well as a searchable knowledge base. And we also have a learning portal where you can you can register and go in and, and, and uh, go through a learning course that will teach you all of the key parts of, uh, of mission control. Again, hope you found this useful. Thanks for your time. Bye.